I'm Realtor Deb Tomorrow, and this is At Home in Bloomington, brought to you by Karen Russell, Ruoff Home Mortgage. We profile the people, places, and resources that make Bloomington Bloomington and help you live your best life at home in Bloomington. Hello and welcome to At Home in Bloomington. I am your host, Realtor Deb Tomorrow, as always here with the lovely Miss Karen Russell, our show sponsor and the best name lender in the state of Indiana. Hello. Hey, Deb. So I have a quiz for you. All right, it's right. just a one question quiz though. So it's it pass or fail. No, it's interesting because <laughs> we were just before the show, we were discussing a commonality that I have with one of our guests, which is that I played bassoon and she played bassoon. I'm still shocked by that. I don't know why. Because there was another instrument we've had. A con- I had to go back in the catalog of podcasts. There was another instrument that you played, and it wasn't a bassoon. Mm, pretty sure. Okay. I played my bassoon on the Bob and Tom show when I was in um, seventh grade. I played Rod Stewart. Some guys have all the luck on my bassoon. It was awesome. I'm I'm like I'm speechless on that too because it's Bob and Tom. <laughs> I'm thinking, what would you be doing there as a it's as a, a long young story? Student? Okay. And I'll have to tell it sometime, but uh, yeah. No. So we're going to continue the trend of things you didn't know about Deb, probably, in, okay. in high school. So here's the quiz. What was my first job ever outside of babysitting? Outside of babysitting? Mm-hmm. Know, probably teaching French or something. Mm. Working in a in a music store? No. Selling reeds for bassoons? <laughs> no. That was a good mm. guess. No. Uh, I don't know. I worked at the library, at the public library. I did not know this. The Marion County Public Library, Lawrence Township Branch, right next to Lawrence North, which was my rival high school because I went to Lawrence Central up in Indianapolis. And my job was called, and this always cracked me up. No one else thinks it's funny. My job was called a page. I was a page at the library, right? I think that's funny. I don't know where it came from. But basically, (laughs) I put books away. And uh, and back then, the the library had the card catalogs. The librarians were Google. Yes, they they, they had all that information, and it was kind of a hangout place. Um, we could talk was, probably back then. Yeah, we I mean, had to kind old. of behave, right? We had, we had, I had to wear like skirts library. and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it was a long time ago. There was a summer reading program. I know that much, and there were some other things. But basically, this is my opinion from the inside, since I worked there when I was fifteen. Uh, it was about books. I mean, that in, in music and, and records, and you know that records, maybe some CDs. Uh, but that kind of thing. And I think so much has changed. Uh, and that's what we're here to find out today. Okay. So I failed the test. Right. Okay. But you're going to win. All right. Perfect. Because you always win if you listen to this show. So when the show is over, you're going to run out and you're going to renew your library card faster than you can say Justin Timberlake. Mm. Well, I already have my library card. Good. (laughs) Well, this is the deal of the century then, because you're going to learn... I've been like doing a little bit of research uh, in anticipation of the show, and I, every other second, I'm like, what? They have that? They do this? It's crazy. So we're going to welcome our guests, Erica Brown and Matt Neer, who are the Community Engagement Librarians. Welcome. Hello. Hey. I'm guessing that's a, a, a position that has not been around for 50 years. No, I want to say like three. It's, it's become five a years? new trend. A lot of libraries have have looked outward for how they sort of operate. So instead of telling you what you want, we are looking to the community and trying to um, program with like a conversation in mind. Engage with you, perhaps. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, see that community <laughs> engagement. So um, I wanted to share the the mission statement for the Monroe County Public Library, which is that the Monroe County Public Library strengthens our community and enriches lives by providing equitable access to information and opportunities to read, learn, connect, and create. And I would propose that that probably is a very different mission statement than they had in 1986 six or so when I worked at the public library Um, and it's that learning and connecting and creating and I think the creating is a huge part too that's pretty exciting so um, I want to confess I didn't really know much of what was going on uh, at the library I had a library card Um, but I think it was last year Erica contacted me and said we're doing a homebuyer seminar with some people from hand and a lender and you know could you come and uh, and kind of be on this panel discussion and so I did and that's when I started following on Facebook and I was like what is going on there are just like literally events I think every day I mean Mm -hmm. you could have a pretty massive Mm -hmm. social life just based on what's going on at the library so is that what you guys want to talk about? I want to kind of make this show about whatever you want to talk about. So do you want to talk about all the different stuff that's going on? Ooh, 
So I just read some books. I just want to talk about books. You don't talk about books. Yeah. Well, let's talk first about, because you guys are podcasters too. Yeah. Which is funny because before the show, Karen was like, oh, we'll just let you do the show and we'll be interviewed. Well, they yeah. can do that. He wasn't even phased though. He was like, oh, okay. Well, Gary, yeah. Because they have a podcast. So you have a monthly podcast that comes yes. out mm-hmm. and it's called? Your Friendly Neighborhood Librarians. Your yes. Friendly Neighborhood Librarians. And it does talk a lot about books. Yes, we do. We usually have like a what we're reading segment. Yeah. We're not quite as well organized as you all are. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't we're, say we're that. We're still fresh on the scene, but <laughs> I wouldn't say that. It's it's a nice organized anarchy. But think. then you talk about other things too beyond that too of you know just of games and other things that are going on and. Um, I want to talk at some point during this show about the ebooks, the audiobooks, because Erica, I, I know from listening to the podcast that you're a big fan of the audiobooks. Yes. And I want to learn a little bit more about that, um, too. But so you've got the, the podcast, and how can people find that? It is now on iTunes mm-hmm. and SoundCloud, and you can also Spotify. Uh, Spotify. Yeah. Okay. You post it on YouTube as well. Okay. And Facebook. Facebook. Mm-hmm. And your website. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the Monroe County. Um, public library, which I just Google. I'm not good at remembering web addresses. It's mcpl.info. There you go. Anybody listening? There you go. So <laughs> tons and tons of things on there as well. So, okay. So back to my question, where do you want to start? What do you want to talk about? Let's talk about our podcast. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think like we, we came about uh, four shows ago, so like four months ago. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it's a really great way to connect to people because podcasts are like such a popular thing, as you all know. Yeah. Um, so it's been a blast. We just sort of talk about what we're interested in. And um, I think through our programming, which we tend to do programs that reach out to people in like their 20s to 40s. Yeah. Um, so we do a lot of things like board game nights. We do Dungeons and Dragons programs. We do different book clubs that meet in the community. DIY maker programs where uh-huh. you, we teach you how to do a certain skill or craft mm-hmm. or art thing. Um, and we're running through it and then tell you how to do it once you get home as well. So it's not just we're going to do it with you and uh-huh. here and then you go home and don't know how to replicate that. Okay. So we really try to <laughs> teach you the skills and then send you home with instructions and materials so that you can do it again and aren't just like, oh, crap, what did I just do? Right. <laughs> like when you go to the wine and canvas and like you paint something and, and then you're like, never going to be able to do that again. <laughs> I don't know how big of a magic in that wine. So you have like crafter nights yes. at the library, and also do you do them at other locations too? Yes, I just started doing. I do a program called Podcraft Club, where we yes. listen to a new podcast and do a craft associated with it. So it's a good way to like introduce people to new podcasts, and yeah. then instead of just like blankly staring at each other while we listen to a podcast, right. we have a craft to do something with our hands. So we'll do book binding. Um, if you're into, interested in Dungeons and Dragons, we'll do miniature painting. Um, a lot oh. of fun stuff. So you just did linoleum printmaking. Mil- yeah. Oh, lines. interesting. Yeah. And what kind of podcast do you listen to while you're doing that? Any number of things. Every month it's a new podcast. So um, last month we listened to Lore. I don't know if you all dig some like folklore, slightly spooky podcasts. Okay. But I would. I would get into that. It's very yeah. good. Mm-hmm. They just made a show of it on Amazon, which mm-hmm. is wonderful. Um, we do some mm-hmm. book related podcasts. Maybe we'll do our own podcast at some point. I was saying, or you could do this podcast. <laughs> do this podcast, yeah. And then we can help you figure out what craft. I don't know. You maybe. pick a craft and I'll play it. Right? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And are you doing that at the library or you're I'm doing, doing that? that at Cup and Kettle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the lovely folks over there. Yeah. Like, yeah, come on over so we get to hang out there, have good tea, and That's do some awesome. crafts. That's awesome. So uh, crafting is one thing you guys have going on. We also do book clubs. Um, We both have book clubs that meet in various places around the community. Mm -hmm. So I run one called Books on Tap, where Mm -hmm. we meet at bars on a Monday Mm -hmm. night and talk about the books we're reading. Um, We're going to do one where we talk about films we've watched, things we've listened to. Um, It's a lot of fun, and you can have a beer while talking about it. Um, So let's talk a little bit about the mechanics of book club, because... Um, I've never been in a book club. I have a lot of friends who are in book clubs and I have questions Okay. because how much like notice do you have to read the book? How much pressure do you have to read the book? I have like flashbacks of like <laughs> high school where we were all like trying to figure out who could read the book <clears throat> the least mm-hmm. just because we were in high school, you know, and it's like... I just joined a joined a book club. I had all those questions, but I just dove in because you know that's how I right. never do anything. I have all these same questions, but well, so one of the things we want to do with this podcast is um, introduce people to new things or that they may not be aware of. But then we want to kind of 
preview them so they yeah. sort of know what to expect. Sure. So, A, how do people find out about book clubs? So, the, all of our book clubs, um, there are quite a few ways to find out about them. We're on Facebook. We're on Meetup. Um, mm-hmm. It's on our website. So, we have a web calendar on our website that you can see all of our programs for going into the future and in the past mm-hmm. if you want to know what we've done. What you've missed. Yes, what yeah. you've missed. <laughs> um, and we also have a very nice program guide that comes out oh, nice. every four months and it tells you all of our programs that we're going to be doing. Um, Where can you get that program guide? They're in the library. Obviously, and the library. And we've also started yeah. um, they go to different places around the community. Oh, okay. Um, so, like Mother Hubbard's Cupboard, mm-hmm. uh, there's some other nonprofits that get them. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly where they are, but they're okay. all yeah, they're around. around. Yeah. Okay. Are they like, 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 can you get it like, like via email? email. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we also have, like, I think through our fiction list. So, if you get, like, author alerts or anything like that, they have a little section on top that'll tell you about upcoming programs. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you go there and you find a book club that appeals to you. Are they kind of organized by genre or are they organized um, so by liquor preference? Or? <laughs> yeah, I have, a, it's coffee or uh, alcohol. I, have, yeah. I have a book club that's called Freshly Brewed Books. Um, we only read sci-fi, but I might branch out to more genres. But um, we meet at coffee shops around town. Uh, it's the last Sunday of each month. Um, it's actually my first time leading a book club or really being part of a book club, mm-hmm. except for like a small like theory lit one um, mm-hmm. in, in grad school but like I've never lit one before and it's super pleasant it's a very like relaxed atmosphere everyone is really cool um, like I was very stressed out but like 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 you were talking about but it's, yeah. it's very easy it's not like it's not like being in class or anything okay. it's just like reading something and then talking about it because I would yeah I would how many like members do you have in yours it's anywhere from 7 to 18 okay um, it just varies upon like how good the book is sure um, yeah yeah, the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if it's a book that people didn't like, you notice there's a drop-off in attendance. So the like, conversation is fun. Yes, because yeah. tearing a book apart is oh, as much yeah. fun as sure. saying, right. oh, I really love this book. <laughs> and um, how many times do you meet about the same book? Just once. Just once, okay. Yeah. So we have book club kits at the library um, that we purchase and it comes with about 10 books in it and some questions anybody in the community that has a library card can check the kids out for their book clubs um, but we also use them specifically for our club so we have the books available for people who want to use them um, and read them as part of our book clubs and you we tend to release them about a month before our events okay um, so usually at the previous book club they make them available for people who are participating to start checking out okay so you have about a month or mm-hmm. so to read the book but you know a he- way ahead of time okay that the book is, yeah. we're gonna because we put it in our program guide okay so you can see about a four month chunk of books yeah. Um, so you can be like, oh, hey, that book we're going to be reading in four months. I should, I could read it now if I wanted to. See, I always thought book club was like there was like a series no. of like three or four. What I don't know. I don't know. I've never. Depth. Yeah, I've I never. I told you, I have this. no idea. <laughs> I also do a BYOB meeting where you bring your own book and on a topic. Okay. Yeah. So we just did. Um, oh, what did we just do? Should <laughs> you do romance? Yeah. No, yeah. that's not yet. Uh-oh. Um. We're about to do one on um, African American literature, so for and so it's sort of like um, book report, but not really. Or are you just trying to explain to people and get them excited about the book that you're excited about? Kind of. So you, everybody reads a different book on the topic, and we bring it and we talk about like the book that we read, then compare and contrast, and, and we talk about the genre in general. Okay. Um, so like why people like the genre, why people don't. We did one on translated literature, which was really interesting. So we talked a lot about why Americans don't read books that have been translated. Mm. Um, it's like one of those, yeah, it's like Never thought about five percent of the publishing industry. It's a really tiny portion. Wow. Um, Interesting. But then I was listening to one of your podcasts and you were talking about the romance genre, yes. which is sort of, it sounds like maybe it's getting a little bit of street cred now that it didn't have before yes. everybody kind of looked down their noses at, you know, Fabio on the cover and whatever. Um, but you oh, said yeah. that's <laughs> one of the biggest translated uh, genres yes. from English to other languages. Yeah, because there are quite a few cultures um, or countries that don't have romance as a genre at all. So the only way they can read those books is if they get them translated. Um, Interesting. So it goes back that way. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, I just found that part of, of when I was listening to one of your podcasts kind of interesting that you know it, it sounds like you know everybody sort of has their preferences on on genre, but 
that you're a judgment free zone, you know, yeah. like all genres are welcome and you're not looking down at, you know, like, oh, we don't, you know, want to talk about that or. But it's nice because you can pick and choose if you're seeing the books in advance and you can say, I'm, I don't think I'm going to get into that book. So I'm going to skip and maybe mm -hmm. do the next one. So I, cause I was invited years ago, probably three or four years ago to be in a book club. And I read the book. I was like, this is the book. I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be, you know, intelligent. I'm going to, you know, use my brain cells, whatever. And I got the book and I read it on vacation. It was so freaking depressing. <laughs> I like literally, I think, ruined my vacation. Because, and I think oh. I was at one point, I was like, I don't even want to read this anymore. Everybody was so angst ridden and stressed uh -huh. out. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, this was a bad idea. And then I was like, book club now. I'm, <laughs> like, Last time. I'm not going to go to Lenny's and sit there and get more stressed out talking about this stressful book. And yeah. I, whatever. I mean, that was just me and how I interpreted yeah. that book. I, I, I like, like you said, I, I don't know if I could get into sci-fi or, or something like that, but I want something that's going to maybe suspenseful or anything historical. I, I enjoy reading those. My book club, we haven't picked one of those yet, but, um, when I joined, people laughed because I didn't read like mm -hmm. leisurely or, you know, I always associated reading with school. And once I was done with college, it's like, I don't ever want to have to read, you know, 80 chapters in a week, but it's fun. It is no pressure. And then after the first book, I was like, I finished this book, everyone, like they can, like the naysayers <laughs> could sit back down. I did it. I did it. Good and job, I Karen. Well, Thanks. one of the things that um, I really appreciated hearing Erica say on a, one of the librarian podcasts was that you listen to a lot of audiobooks. I do. And I know there are a lot of people like, no, no, you have to read it. And I'm like, man, I don't know. It's, it is, a, and there are a lot of occasions where I think if I had an audiobook, this would be a good time to listen to it in the car mm -hmm. or during travel. Um, and so I learned that the library has downloads of audiobooks. Yes. Like, because I'm going, I want to buy all these books, but it can start to rack up and you, even, you know, with the audio kind of thing. So, yeah. So we have physical audio books. So like you can, the traditional, yeah. you can just like go into the library and check out each. Are they CDs still? Yeah. Um, we also my have playlists, which are sort of like single shot MP3 players. Okay. They're really interesting. You just put a battery in, plug in headphones and you're set. Um, huh. But then yeah. we have about three apps technically four but it's really three yeah. um because of libby but that all do e-audiobooks and e-books um okay. so there's cloud library um hoopla which also does uh digital streaming for like tv shows and movies and songs so you can download like cds and mm -hmm. stuff like that through it and then we have um overdrive and the app libby which work together and they both have um e-audiobooks so i'm actually listening to an audiobook right now through that um, which I'm enjoying a lot. And on the audiobooks, do you, if you download them, are they only kind of good for a period of time? Yes. Okay. Um, depending on the app, it's usually like 14 to 21 days, yeah. depending on what you're listening to. Can you renew it just like you can renew a regular? As long as no one has a hold. Okay. The, the weird thing about it is, is Hoopla is amazing because you can check out eight items per month, but yeah. everything, everything you see on Hoopla, you can check out immediately. And then Overdrive or Libby is sort of like a traditional library. There's so many copies of it. Okay. So you get licenses, basically. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting, because I was trying to figure out how that worked. I've done that a couple of times on a long trip. Yeah. But it's it, it's it's so refreshing to hear someone else's voice, because when you're reading, you're getting yeah. into a good book. I know I sound like an avid reader, but you're getting into a good <laughs> book, and you're like, I wonder the what... Shit. Their voice isn't like what I think it is in my head, but... I don't know. I, I enjoy this. Especially when someone who does like all the accents. Well, so that's what I want because I love Agatha Christie. I always have. Yes. I've, and you Orient were talking Express. about Murder on the Orient Express. And so I need to know uh, at break, you need to get, tell me how I exactly find that audio book because I want to listen to it because you said that the person who's doing the reading does all the foreign accents. You know, Erica Poirot is French. And mm. so, you know, they've got that accent, but they have all the different nationalities and British and everything. So, um, really so it can add a layer of... Um, you know, I don't know, bring it to life if you don't have that ability within your own imagination. I know I don't have that ability, so. <laughs> awesome. It's really bad at accents. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, okay, we're going to take a break, and we come back, we're going to talk about some of the other really interesting and cool things that the library has to offer, so stick around. You are at home in Bloomington. Bloomington. 
Hi, this is Karen Rastel with Ruoff Home Mortgage. Did you know there are low or no down payment options available? If you're interested in buying a home but not sure about your options, contact me today at 812-606-7653. Together, we'll make your dreams of home ownership come true. Ruoff Home Mortgage is an Indiana corporation licensed by the Indiana Department of Financial Institutions. This is not an offer for extension of credit or a commitment to lend. All loans must satisfy company underwriting guidelines. Equal housing lender. NMLS number 141868. This is your Real Estate Realist, practical advice on buying and selling real estate based on my experience closing over 800 home sales. Raise your hands. How many of you know how a lender comes up with how much house you can afford? We all know they ask for tons of paperwork and documentation, but just how do they come up with the price of a home you can buy? Before I was a realtor a million years ago, I thought it was some factor of your income, like two or three times your annual income, but I was wrong. So here's the real scoop. First of all, your lender evaluates your debt to income ratio. This is looking at your monthly income before taxes compared to how much debt you currently have. That's things like car payments, credit card payments, student loans, even if they're in deferment or forbearance, and other kinds of revolving debt. Mortgage rules specify the amount of debt you are allowed to carry as a percentage of your income. So some loans allow 35%, some loans allow 45%, but the number varies. A lender looks at the maximum amount of debt you can carry based on your loan type. It subtracts out your current debt, and whatever is left is what is allowable for your monthly mortgage payment. Don't worry, though, your credit score does come into play. Now that your lender has a monthly mortgage payment amount, they work backwards into a purchase price. The better your credit score, the more home you can qualify for. Because your credit score determines your interest rate as well as other costs associated with your mortgage. The third thing a lender looks at is how much down payment you have. So that's an important thing to know up front when getting pre-qualified. Down payments can be as little as zero, and down payments can even be gift money, but the more you have, the more house you can afford. Taking all of these things into consideration, a few moments of magic math later, your lender will tell you what you can qualify for. A great lender, like At Home in Bloomington sponsor Karen Rastel of Ruoff Home Mortgage, will take the time to show you the numbers and help you understand the math. For more information on pre-qualifying for a mortgage, check out my Real Real Estate Today podcast, episode 83. You can find it on iTunes, my YouTube channel, and at www.athomeinbloomington.com. My name is Donna, and my realtor is Deb Tomorrow. When it comes time to buy or sell a home, she is the obvious choice. Deb is not your average realtor. She stands beside you all the way, before, during, and after your real estate transactions. Deb is passionate about real estate and it shows. So just do it. Choose Deb. Now back to the show. Welcome back to At Home in Bloomington. I'm Realtor Deb tomorrow. Before we get back to learning all of the cool things going on at the Marion... Marion? <laughs> yeah, because that's, that. that was my library, Monroe County Public Library. Uh, I, I want to share our Facebook follow segment. I, I know that we've really been focusing on the adult programming portion of what the library has to offer because I think that that is kind of unknown. I think everybody knows that there's always stuff going on for kids. Um, and, and, you know, parents look at, look to you as a, look to the library as a resource, but maybe adults aren't looking to the library as the same resource. But <clears throat> I digress because there's one kids program that I really, really love. And that's the reading to dogs. That is just the cutest. Have you seen that? No, I have not. Well, Karen, I know we just got a puppy. Karen so. just got a puppy a few days ago. And so, uh, in honor of that. So it's a great way for kids to build confidence as they're reading, um, because you're reading to someone, but to someone sort of non judgmentally. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to bring this up with Jack. He needs to be reading more. Yeah. He so needs to be reading you're going to have to little, little rose puppy there. Um, so that's really cool. So on that note, our Facebook followed this week is the Monroe County Humane Association, which sponsors that program. Um, we're going to be hearing a lot about dogs, uh, in the coming months because I'm part of a group that's starting a, a senior pet rescue. Um, so it's a passion that's close, uh, near and dear to my heart. But I wanted to mention the Monroe County Humane Association because it's not one of those sad Sarah McLaughlin, eyes of the angel, <laughs> arms of the angel, whatever, uh, sad Facebook pages. It's full of free events and resources. Karen, hint, hint. Yes. Um, leash skills and yes, all kinds. Mm-hmm. Yes. Things like that. Whether you own your own pet or if you've got time in your life, if you're at a time in your life where you can't own a pet, but you still need to pet a dog every once in a while, um, the library and the Humane Association have events for that. So check out the Monroe County Humane Association. Speaking of which, 
You guys do, I know, you guys do the pet therapy, right? Or the library has we're a pet doing therapy? A pet therapy cafe this weekend on yeah. Sunday. Okay, and we're recording this in early yes, January. Sorry. so But that's okay. No, we're so I mean. A whole series with them. So we're going to do a lot of their classes that they usually um, charge a fee to do. They're going to do at the library over the course of the spring. Oh, nice. At no cost. Yeah. So the pet therapy is just come in and pet a dog. Um, there's going to be snakes, a bearded oh, dragon, that's bunnies, not therapy. cats. That's therapy a for some people. Mm. A goat. It's really a good goat. hugging a baby yes. snake. A baby goat? A pygmy goat, I believe. Oh, the little And then baby there's going to be coffee and tea, so you can have a nice caffeinated drink while you hug an animal. That's pretty awesome, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's awesome. I never even thought about just wanting to, like, just need a pet. You know, people need hugs, and every now yeah. and then people just need to pet something. But they do that for IU students during finals week. Yeah. They bring out dogs to like. They never did that for. No, for, I know they didn't do it for us. We were deprived. Generation we X. Were. We were. We had to tough it out uh, and eat our ramen noodles and shut up. But uh, <laughs> no, they they'll bring out into certain areas like the Union or whatever. They'll bring um, dogs and just oh, I love it. students. Yeah. So, anyways, okay. So there we go. So pet therapy. Check out that on uh, your web on the website. Let's talk a little bit about um, the technology stuff that you have available because I thought well, I was going to ask you this question. What's the craziest thing that you all have as a resource that somebody can check out or borrow? Ukuleles. Oh, ukuleles. really? I love ukuleles. Yeah, you can check out check ukuleles out a ukulele. From you know, I had my friend who created the the Uke Club like years ago, and uh, she's she's very seasoned. She's getting cool. up there in age, and she loves it. She doesn't participate much anymore, but she would come out. She would always invite me. You need to come. She played at the Players Pub, the library. I yeah, dream ukulele. of learning to play the ukulele. Well, you get started at the library. I know. That's amazing. Well, I thought that the most interesting thing was that you can check out and borrow a mobile hotspot. Mm -hmm. Yep. Really? Yeah. So you get this little thing. It looked to me, it was about, you know, the size of a CD, but a little thicker. And it's a mobile hotspot that goes off of T-Mobile, like phone service. So anywhere you have T-Mobile phone service, you can hook up to, I think, five devices to Mm -hmm. this. So I was just thinking, like, from my perspective as a realtor, someone moves into a house and they don't have their internet set up Mm -hmm. and they've got limited data on their phones. They could go to the library and check out this mobile hotspot. And be able to do what they need to do while they're getting everything have, set up. I would have never thought that that's what, something you could do there. I know. Yeah, because yeah, there's a lot of the county that just doesn't have access to the internet just regularly. I think my house is in yeah. that yeah. one spot. <laughs> yeah. So that that's, um yeah, that's really interesting. I own some properties in outlying areas. And you can, your phone signal is getting better and better, but there's still no internet options. Mm-hmm. So that's really interesting. Um, okay, so you want to talk a little bit about um, uh, Level Up. Yes. Yeah. So is our, what is that? It's our digital creativity studio. It's on the first floor of the library. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a way to give access to more expensive high-end software like Adobe Photoshop and things like that. So you can go there and use it for free with your library card. There's two audio studios, so uh-huh. you can record your own podcast there. Yep. Lots of people record music there. There's a video studio. With a green screen. Green screen. Uh-huh. Um, every Thursday, there's a new program, so you can learn how to make 3D models to do 3D printing. How to DJ. Yeah, yeah I saw that one coming up. How to create an animated GIF, um, and it's GIF. <laughs> is that a pet peeve? <laughs> <laughs> um, they, we teach yeah. basic audio mm-hmm. production. And then we also have access to lynda.com. Okay. So if you want to know how to do Photoshop yourself or learn how to do like the nuts and bolts of Excel or anything mm-hmm. like that with your library card, you can get online to Linda's catalog of their courses and take mm-hmm. those. Um, I believe some of those are like hooked into places like LinkedIn, so you can say I've taken this class. Oh, nice! And it can become part of right. your um, profile. What are the um, any age requirements on any of the level up stuff? It depends. They typically are a little bit more advanced. So okay. I think 13 and up. And up or okay. 12 and up is but yeah, great time. for high school students. I know Absolutely. Karen has a son who likes to mess around with a lot of the audio equipment yes. and stuff, and it would have been great probably you know eight years ago if he had known that. 
Yes. When when he would say, I'm going to the library to record music, wow. I'm thinking in the back of my head, is he really? Because, <laughs> oh, but I, yeah. but I'd, I'd walk past once and saw, because um, I went there looking for mm-hmm. an album. Okay. Because you can check out actual mm-hmm. like music. Yeah. Which I, yeah. I feel like the, my motto for me, because I was so old, like old school library, <laughs> was like, it's more than books. Because I literally was only introduced to the Monroe County Library when I was an ed major at okay. IU. Oh, yeah. So I would use some of the resources um, in the children's section. Yeah. But the adult part, I was like, I don't know. So, yeah. Um, but I've seen the, the booths, and I think that um, the, they give out tours to the, the green screen, that, uh-huh. yes. like, I, whatever you were talking about earlier, like uh, we had a, studios. yeah, the audio studio. I think our Cub Scout group went through there once to, oh, cool. nice. to check it out. But I think the most important thing is that anybody listening that has interest in any of the things that we've talked about today, they need to feel comfortable to just go in and ask, Absolutely. right? I mean, that's yeah. what you guys are there for to show how to do whatever needs to, you know, that they want to do. We love telling people about what we have and like showing them how to use it. That's what, well, that's why we get paid the big bucks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's to help people and to show them how to use this stuff and to help them get access. So if I'm at home trying to download an audio book, I can just call yes. and say, I don't know what I'm doing. It. Yeah. yeah, it's not working or whatever. Yeah, or if you um, like get a gift and it's a new e-reader and you don't know how to use it, you can drop by the library and we'll help walk you through it. We have drop-in um, times, like tech days. Wow. Um, where you can come in and we'll show you how to do it or you can make an appointment. Yeah, I needed in. that about eight or nine years ago. I was like, <laughs> I'm not going in there. I didn't want to look like I didn't know. I felt like I'm old enough. I can figure this out. I'm still like, you know, I so know how to read out. a book on it. That's about my extent. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's talk about a few other other programs that you have coming up. Um, one, I had... I've seen it on the website, and you can tell me a little bit more about it because I don't really understand it. Is the, about the zine? Yeah, so uh, zines are sort of DIY alternative literature. They run the gamut from like anarchist political tracks to like poetry or comics. Um, Boxcar Books actually donated their entire zine library to us, so we've used that as the kernel for a new collection. Um, I think it's a really cool, interesting thing. Mm-hmm. Eric and I have been actually going through the collection, reading it all, um, getting an idea of what we actually have, which has been so. Really it fantastic. sort of looks like a magazine, but they're Definitely I mean, one and done DIY. Some are yeah. series, some are individual. Okay. Um, there's just a ton of different things they can be. Um, I found one that's really cool. It's like uh, interviews from people in San Francisco. It's called Map of Fog. Uh, it's really beautiful. It's not something you would find anywhere else in like a traditional book or volume, which hmm. I think is cool. It's sort of like short circuiting that um, that line between like writing a book to finding a publisher and an editor. And it's okay. more like people write something, they write their book of poetry, and then they just publish it themselves. Okay. And some of it can just be paper folded over and stapled together, but you can find some really magical stuff in there. It yeah. is really utilized as a format by people who couldn't get into the traditional publishing mm-hmm. industry, so like the LGBT community, uh-huh. um, people of color, mm-hmm. immigrants, people like that, who just, they would write something and they knew it wouldn't get published, so this is a way to circumvent that. It's like a podcast on paper. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I can't be famous any other way, so this is all I got. No one will listen to me. Interesting. So you've got that going and you're doing events to help people. We're doing a big launch day um, on the 19th. Of January. Of January. Okay. Yeah. So we'll have like uh, sessions on how to make your own zine. Um, we'll probably do one collaborative zine. So everybody will make a page of the zine and we'll publish it. Oh, and nice. Put it in the library. Um, I have some local people from the zine scene. A lot of people from Boxcar have been supporting this and been really enthusiastic about it. So it's been fun to have that sort of buy-in from the community um, to put all this stuff on. And we're going to be collecting community Mm zines. So if somebody does a zine and would Uh like to donate a copy to the library, um, we'll review it and see if we'll add it to our collection. That's really interesting. I guess that's just... Were you aware of this whole zine scene? No, and I'm in my head, is it like Z-I-N-E-S? Yeah, like like, magazine. 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 Okay, yeah. Yeah. I Which, I mean, I'd heard the word before, but I guess I never really understood what it meant. But now I'm just like, well, it's just an artistic expression with words and probably pictures as opposed to, like, you know, a painting on the wall. It's just a different way to express or, or you know, mm-hmm. or whether it's a written album, you know, or whatever. Um, it's, oh, it's interesting. I mean, I could see it becoming a really 
cool snapshot for what's going on in the community at any given time. I remember being here in grad school in 2010 and Boxcar being such like a great hub of things. And um, I think it's like a really cool local Bloomington institution. And I'm cool. glad that we can like be a part of it to continue it on. Yeah. Huh. Yes. Cool. Um, and then Karen had a really good question. Yeah, earlier in the show, you had mentioned that um, your role is to see what the community is wanting out of our library. And so I was curious, how do you get that information? How do you collect that data? Okay. Eric and I started at the same time, mm -hmm. and we sort of saw, like, a lot of people that use the library, like you start as a kid and it's really awesome and then like you get to become cool and, and like a teenager and you can drive. <laughs> and I think a lot of people leave the library then and then they come back like once they have their own kids. And so we wanted to try and hit that gap. Um, and since we are lucky enough to fall in that age gap, <laughs> we just sort of do a lot of programs that we would want to do and, you know, encourage our friends and their friends and their friends to come and check it out. But if people had, if people had um, an idea that maybe you guys hadn't thought of or considered, or your circle of influence hasn't mentioned, w would you be open to like suggestions? Absolutely. And they just yeah. what they just reach out to you guys on the website or come in and uh, we get a lot of people that not a lot, but we do get people who will come up to the desk and be like, I have this really great idea for a program. Who do I talk to? Um, and then we'll get contacted by whoever's at the desk and be like, you need to talk to Matt or I need to talk to Erica. Okay. Um, or we'll get emails or people will come to our programs and we'll afterwards be like, this is really cool. I have this ability. That's how you started your astronomy programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I had a guy yeah. come in who's really awesome. He's a PhD student in uh, Near Eastern Studies and loved astronomy. He came into my yoga program um, and he's like, hey, I'm into this. I want to talk about it. And so he ended up doing a talk for my Nerd Night program. He did an astronomy series. Um, that's the fun thing about being a community mm -hmm. engagement librarian is like, even though we'll come up with an idea, um, we'll typically find community partners. And then those partners will, will bend the idea to something mm -hmm. even better than what we can mm -hmm. sort of make up on our own. And then you, you just mentioned Nerd Night. Yeah. So what is that? Nerd Night is sort of like a series of TED Talks. So it's like a 20 minute talk on a very esoteric subject. And we hold them at bars, so you can like learn something. I sort of like I'm sneaking in education into like bar <laughs> hangout, which is really pleasant. So we have like I've had somebody talk about feminism and bullying. I've had somebody talk about whale music. Um, this time around, we're going to do a historical talk about Bloomington, like um, disaster preparedness. Mm -hmm. While somebody else talked about um, podcasting and the revival of audio, audio storytelling, and somebody else will talk about um, the history of animals in the United States history. In one night. In one night. Wow. 20 minute talks. <laughs> 20 minutes. Come by Switchyard, have a beer. And how often do you do that? Uh, sporadically. Sporadically. It's, a <laughs> yeah. it's, you know, uh, probably twice a year as well yeah. while I'm doing it. Okay. Yeah. So, again, check out the website. Check out Facebook to find out all those cool things uh, going on. So, if uh, who is eligible to get a library card and uh, per partake of all of these amazing services? Anybody who has a Monroe County address. Okay. So if you live in Monroe County, you can get a library card and it is free. Okay. If, yeah. if you live outside of Monroe County, you can still get a library card. You just have to pay for it. But it's like 60 bucks. Yes, it's 60 For a year. And you get access, I think, to all the library cards in Indiana. Right $65. I, I read about the, this. Yeah. Yes. $65, you can get a special card that gives you access to all of them in Indiana. Or you can get the $60 one that's just Monroe County, like a special. Yes. But now a lot of these things, like you're talking about, like the Nerd Night, the book clubs, those, nobody's carding you, right? No, no, you can just come to those. The library programs are free and open to everyone. Yeah. We charge, charge no fees. And if we're making a project, so if we're doing a craft program, mm -hmm. you get to make the craft and take it home with you. And that still isn't charged? That doesn't cost charged. anything? You've already paid for it with your Deal of the century, I'm our, saying. All of our programs are funded by our friends of the library through donations from the community. Okay. So uh, that's a, a good segue to if you would like to donate to the library. <laughs> they would be very happy to do that. I know you've got bookstores and you've got some events and things like that, fundraisers. You can actually join the Friends of the Library and become a friend. Um, okay. 
through their website. Um, and their fa- they have a Facebook page as well. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, definitely a support. Now, the Ellisville branch is closed right now, right, because it's under renovation. And it should open up the end of February. Okay, that's right. Yeah, I thought I heard that, too. So that'll be back bigger than better. That's a nice little library. It is. Yeah. And I'm also going to say, personal plug, I don't know how Erica and uh, Matt feel about this, but if you ever get asked about a branch on the west side, get behind <laughs> it. Because uh, I know there's been rumblings about, you know, do we need another branch and, you know, something on the west side and, um, you know. I would say yes. Well, I, live I know on you live the on the west, west side. side but I've always lived on the west side yeah. for years. But I would love to see um, that too. But sometimes it is tough to get downtown. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, and I, we go to the Ellettsville one more yeah. probably. Yeah. Um, and I had one other program that was completely random, but I thought it was really, really cute. Because this one um, has to do with kids. Well, let me back up. So in your, it may have been your first podcast, towards the end, you were talking about your library stories of shame. Uh, <laughs> now they're like, oh, I can't believe you brought that well, up. Man, she you, just you said it, she just put her head down. You said so it on a podcast, so it's fair game. <laughs> I'm not going to make you share your stories of shame <laughs> because people can just listen to your podcast. Yeah. I will start, share my story of shame, though, which was I borrowed a book once, and I had a puppy, and she ate it. Mm. And um, I did not return it for quite some time because I didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> and then I finally went in, I think, and sheepishly was like, here's my chewed up book. And, you know, and whatever, they're very nice. And I was like, when I was done with the transaction and making things right, and she was so nice about it. And I go, does the library not hate me anymore? Because I was pretty convinced that the library hated me because my dog ate their book. And she was like, it's fine. So anyways, if you're avoiding the library because you have had overdue fines or whatever, but there's a really cute program that allows kids to pay off their late fees if the kids have fines, Mm -hmm. late fees for um, being late turning things in by reading. So I thought that was a really cute idea. Yeah. Once again, they didn't have that when we were kids, but um, I was always on both my kids to be like, you need to be, you know, very aware of the due dates because... (laughs) Think about when you're that person waiting on that item. Yeah. And it's like, they're like, well, we can just renew it. I'm like, "Mm, no, (laughs) if you have time to get it done. Yeah. But it's cute. They can work off those fines. I did just get a letter in my mailbox uh, a few days ago. Yeah. I was really excited because it looked like a check or something. And I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, I'm new to this library. Maybe they give like a year in bonuses. I'll <laughs> right. check out so many books. Right. And then I, I unwrapped it and it was a bill for a book because I've had this book on my desk for too long. Oh, no. Uh, so like it happens to everyone. But and you work there. I, I, I'm literally like five feet away from like turning it in. So. <laughs> All of us, even librarians, make mistakes awesome. like holding books out for too so long. So the point I wanted to, to <laughs> the awesome. point I, I wanted it. to make was that don't be embarrassed. Go back to the library mm-hmm. if you have not been. They want you to come back, and they are very forgiving. Yeah. So it happens to us all. Exactly, yes. exactly. Yeah, be sure to tune into podcast number one at the end, and you'll hear their stories. <laughs> um, all right, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so excited nice. about all the stuff that's going on, and I just want to encourage people to check it out because it's an amazing community resource. So, all right, we will be back with another episode of At Home in Bloomington. Got a show idea? I'd love to hear it. And be sure to contact me for all your real estate needs and questions too. You can email me at deb at realrealestatetoday.com. And follow me on Facebook at Deb Tomorrow Realtor. To contact Karen Rastel for all your mortgage needs, call 812-606-7653 or log on to ruoff.com and go to the Bloomington Center. Thanks to all the Bloomington people who make production of At Home in Bloomington possible. Special thanks to superstar producer Rachel Dreek Gregorio, digital guru Cynthia Hogan at Monster Digital Marketing for website design and hosting, and video genius Wes Lasher in the production house for engineering the show.